Hi everyone, I'm Lisa White. I'm the End of Life Care Coordinator in Mays Hospital and I suppose we developed the Easy Read booklet here for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, I might just start by asking Lucy to play the video which we made here. It kind of gives you a good idea of what the project was all about. So we are doing a project on a book about end of life. Okay, we're doing a project on a book about end of life care for somebody that's passed away. Uh, and it's about uh, how you're feeling and uh, grief, anger, sadness. Yeah, and how you feel about death, now that somebody dying and everything like that. And how would you feel in a month or so? Or that, so. I find this book with the bereavement, it's too, it's too long of a book and there's too many, um, the words are too small in the book, whereas this one, it's very, it's colourful and there's pictures and there's, it's, there's more writing in it um, and it tells you stuff about grief and end of life and how to care. First, I thought death was scary, but then it's easier to talk about it. So that just gives you an idea of who was involved in the project. So we have Project Search here. They're adults with intellectual disabilities who do a one year work experience program. So they come in and they work for the year here and they rot rotate amongst departments and they've been doing it for 10 years. Um, I suppose to start it, we had, there was one trigger. So my involvement, there was one trigger because one of the Project Search interns saw a frail elderly woman on a trolley and asked the coordinator of Project Search, is that woman dying? And the coordinator said, I didn't know what to say. I mean, I think she was dying, but I didn't know what to say. So she came to me and I said, well, let's have a talk and let's have a discussion. And there's about 16 Project Search interns that come every year. So we met and I thought it was simply going to be an education, but it turned out to be a lot, lot more. So really, the first education that I did with the interns, they had never really had a discussion around death and dying, even though they've been part of the hospital and such a big part of the hospital. Um, no one had really ever sat and involved them in any end of life care initiative. You know, when they talked about personal experiences, but they had not seen their dying loved ones. They hadn't come in to spend time with them before they died. So it really just opened up a lot of, questions and that's where it started now even though like I was reading through your slides routine even though I had in my head I was just going to do education and that's all I wanted to do it kept going a different way so I really the first hurdle was I had to listen to that feedback and I also felt it wasn't something I could do on my own so it definitely involved stakeholders 
So it went to the people that I thought were, go were good in their areas and had expertise. I'm not a nurse, so I went to the palliative nurse specialist. I'm not a doctor, so I went to the palliative consultant. I definitely needed a speech and language therapist, went to her. And as a result, we just formed a working group. And I referred to them about everything that was happening in the education and they would come to the education sessions. And I suppose really what it came down to was the language we use and the lack of information for people with intellectual disabilities that's not accessible within the hospital. So they really wanted to know more and the interns wanted to be involved. And their idea was very much to develop a booklet and that booklet was to be easy read. So it was to have images, it was to have pictures, it was to be um, simple. And that sounds very simple, but it took about, like it, it probably took a year back and forth. And like I'm, I was laughing to myself thinking back, one of the biggest hurdles of it all was, even when we thought we had the booklet done, I remember going through to a project search and one of them said to me, we had, we had explained um, cremation and in the booklet and then a project search intern said well what happens with the ashes and it, you know we had to so it was continuing on and it was constantly going back and forth and another there was another thing oh yeah we had one of the hardest parts for me was the explaining the dying process so what does dead mean and that would have involved the nurse and the consultant you know going through those symptoms and for me, I've worked in this hospital for 13, 12, 13 years. And I still am and wasn't sure how to explain that death rattle or, you know, like, and that I was sitting there learning as much as anyone. So it was becoming relatable to everyone, regardless of discipline, regardless, regardless of intellectual disability. So, um, and when we explained, you know, the person stops breathing, the person stops walking, the person can't move. We went through all of that in the booklet. We wrote down the person stops feeling, which is true. But then and, um, one of the adults said, well, does that mean when they die, they stop those feelings that they loved me? And it was really relevant. And it was such a, it was a moment where we all learned a lot and the consultant learned a lot from that. and we took that out because we we wanted to, we didn't want anyone to feel that way. So it was just all about the words we use and the most basic level of the words we use. And, and I think that's, that's why this project was successful because it's not just about people with intellectual disabilities. And we're finding that on the wards they're using it, parents are picking up the, those booklets and saying that they explain it very well to children. Things like post-mortem or, you know, in very easy language. Um, that's, I suppose, the biggest hurdle, you know, like the community have asked for it around evaluation of booklets, like how do you evaluate, evaluate a booklet? That's difficult um, in terms of it's an unusual type of project, this one. So what we've, what we've decided is from launching it and six months later, we're going to do like a questionnaire in the wards specifically for the nurses. And then we're going to do it for the doctors and see kind of, I suppose, do they know about it, how often they're using it and what they've learned from it as well, just in terms of future improvements. Um, but it's very difficult in terms of families and I can't mm -hmm. figure out a way of how I'd evaluate that part. Obviously, we get a lot of feedback, just people might say it, but that's a difficult one with booklets. You can't really, I don't know how to measure if they are helpful or not, you know. Just a thought for you, Lisa, it might be worth considering putting a little sheet inside the booklet or if you go to a reprint, put mm. a little sheet inside the booklet asking, you know, at a time that you feel you're able to answer this, we would love some feedback in order to, you know, improve this booklet for others. And what did you find useful or helpful or we do a, an even better if or you know what mm -hmm. worked well just two questions what worked well in this yeah. booklet you know what did you like about it or not like about yeah. it and just very simple very yeah. very simple but I agree it's a really difficult area to be looking to bereaved families um mm -hmm. for feedback but maybe 
that's one consideration for you for maybe that was a great suggestion Eileen on putting the little the slip into the books is useful but a lot of times we see evaluation as very quantitative and that we need to have a baseline and even in QI we talk about the baseline and seeing improvements numerically but never underestimate the qualitative assessment so telling a patient story telling a service user story or a family story in a kind of a case study format is a really powerful way of showing the difference that an, uh, an intervention has made without necessarily having to show it numerically going one way or another. So a patient story, a service user story, family member story, and then again, connecting with staff if it's a, if it's a topic that's too sensitive to go to service users or families on and seeing, just asking staff, do they feel it's made a difference? So again, use the qualitative as much as the quantitative. No data without stories, no stories without data is a quote we often use. Maybe um, to come in. So I just thought, uh, like, first of all, thank you to the three speakers. Thank you so much for presenting. Um, and Lisa, I know we're, we're really keen to, to continue to support like yourself and Project Search as you look through what other booklets could be interesting as well for, for the group. So um so I love that because that kind of picks up on the idea of innovation. We've themed this year with innovation, but we don't want that to be a deterrent. We want it to, to open up the door of possibility. So like Lucy was showing you some of our some of the previous applications and projects. And while we would love completely new projects that you think will improve your service, innovation can also be about what Eileen mentioned of a novel approach or a new way of looking at something. So just um you know the the pressure to innovate can sometimes feel overwhelming but don't let that be something that puts you off and certainly if anybody wants to even brainstorm within this um within this forum of like you've got an idea and you want to share it please do um we're we're really open to that and just say that's such great news about the toolkit as well Roisin and and I'm sure there's been a lot of work to go into that and it'll be such a helpful tool now as we enter into this phase that people can use so thank you for sharing on that I felt that so I just thought oh my god like what a gap like you know mm -hmm. so and then we put we've put it into braille we have it in braille and we have it in audio mm -hmm. and that was done really well and we have like a master copy but it's all expensive you know you can't have so we have to do that ourselves um so financially to try and keep it going i suppose and now like project search because it's such a you know with end of life it's such a huge broad topic that there's a lot more that they want to do next following on from this so that's it so, so anyone any other questions or Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It, it was wonderful to have you.